Hello and welcome to another episode here at Big Man in the Woods. My name is Mark, your online scout leader, helping you become a better scout leader. Now, in the last video, I did 10 reasons why you should become a scout leader. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Let's give you 10 reasons why you shouldn't be a scout leader. Now, it's all social media. Uh, Bear Grylls doesn't uh, help really hyping up scouts. Uh, scout leaders out and about you might be walking down the park you see scouts there uh, i've done all my vlogs about how amazing scouting is but is it all amazing well it's not to be honest and i thought i'll give you 10 reasons why you shouldn't be a scout leader all right the first point on why i think you shouldn't volunteer to be a scout leader is because it takes up a lot of time now there's an urban myth that goes around no one fully knows where it's come from about scouts is only two hours a week and as a scout leader it's probably not two hours a week it's probably two hours a day no i'm, I'm exaggerating but there are a lot of things behind the scenes uh, as a scout leader there are a lot of meetings we've got to go to we've got to go to our group meeting uh section meeting there's an agm district meeting maybe there's a county meeting there's a planning meeting um, there's a whole load of meetings going on. You've got your modules, you've got your training to keep up to date. Uh, your local training manager will say, Mark, your first aid is out of date or your safeguarding's out of date. There's valid reasons why we do those training, but it takes up a lot of time and it's just not rocking up to the scout hall on a Thursday at seven and going, ta-da, right scouts, we're doing this badge, that badge. There's a lot of planning that goes behind it. Uh, a lot of... Uh, reasons why we do certain things for safety reasons for many reasons but it can take up more than two hours a week just like in life and at work and at home there is politics in scouting oh my god there is so much politics whether that's in your group uh, your district your county nation uh, you might not agree with what the chief scout says or what the UK commissioners just announced about this and that. You might think, what a load of rubbish. But there is a lot of politics. It is can be very stressful at times. Whether that's dealing with a young person or parents or other leaders. And as a group scout leader, <laughs> it can be very political. In, between, in your group, where the leaders don't talk and the sections don't talk. Oh my God. If scouting didn't have politics, it would be amazing. <laughs> this one, if I speak to my wife, uh, she could talk about this for ages. Scouting can ruin your relationship. It can make you get divorced. <laughs> I kid you not. I've had lots of arguments with my family and I've kind of realized that family goes first before scouting. Uh, but you could, in fact, be scouting probably every day of the week guaranteed every weekend you could be out and about doing some scouting event whether that's with your group or you're going to another section to help in training or there's camping or there's a, a scout event you want to rock up to there's some um fundraising Gilwa reunion uh you want to go and do your archery rifle instructor course there's a whole other things that you could be doing every week every night as well as program planning and take your scout equipment all over your house, badges all over the house, phone calls about this, phone calls about that. Just be careful that you could get divorced because of scouting. Now, this is a tricky one. I've had so many arguments about this one. It's about be careful about using your own annual leave at work for scouting camps and trips and stuff. So normally uh, we go camping Friday to Sunday uh, with my scout group. So that means I would have to take the Friday off at work uh, so we go to the scout hall and pack the van up, all that kind of thing. Uh, go and get the food, drive to the location, unpack the van, that kind of thing. And then, because I'm getting older now, <laughs> Sunday I'm, I'm like, oh, so I need the Monday to recover. I uh, don't always do that, it depends what event it is. But your annual leave can get start taken up from scouting events. Um, and also kind of requesting, so I work shifts in the, in the hospital, so if there's a... A meeting I might have to attend. Um, my boss can get a bit mm, when I keep requesting and requesting. So just be careful on that kind of thing with your work. So I'm here in the in the park, uh, sitting under this magnificent oak tree, and there are there are people walking past. There's dog walkers. Uh, there's a guy running over there, um, and I done it in a vlog uh, just the other week when I got called a pedo as a male scouting 
um, you can get some really nasty names as a scout leader. It's in the in the general public, scouting is seen as a geeky thing to do. It's all about um, camping. It's all about knots. But as a scout leader, we know there's plenty more than just knots and badges and camping. Is there? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, as a guy, I've been called it lots of times. Uh, at work, my friends, dib, dib, dib. <sighs> that drives me insane. Um, and yeah, just being out and about wearing your uniform and even just wearing this necker, I'm getting some odd looks in the park. Um, and you can get called pedo quite often. And yeah, if you don't have broad shoulders like me, uh, you can take it to heart and start thinking, yeah, maybe maybe this isn't worth it. And I'm going to get my family a bad name or something, you know. So be prepared that you might get a bit of adult bullying. Halfway through reasons why you should not become a scout leader, and that's because you have to deal with adults. Young people, oh my God, that's a piece of whatever. But adults, in particularly parents, um, they can be a pain in the in the backside, you know. My little Johnny uh, wants to come camping, but he can't arrive at nine o'clock. Can he arrive at two o'clock? And little Sandra, she needs to be picked up before camp. Um, it finishes at eight, but I want her to be picked up at four. Is that okay? But then do you offer a discount because I'm only doing half days? Parents want to know why you're not camping enough. Parents want to think that scouting is a free child. Well, it's not free, but they think it's a child service. You know, your babysitting service. So while you're going camping, they've got off on holiday. That's happened to me twice. Um, and I pay your your wages, so you do what I tell you. Well, in fact, as a scout leader, we don't get paid anything. This is volunteering, nothing. This is for free. So I don't have to take all your rubbish from you as a parent. Well, you do. You have to listen to me. So parents, that's one problem. But as a leader, oh my God, adult leaders... They are probably worse than beavers. The amount of moaning and groaning and why do we have to do training and this one's not doing pulling their weight, doing the badges and it's always me having to order the badges and it's always me having to pack away the stuff at the end of the night. <sighs> My God, sometimes adult leaders, adults and leaders, should I say, are worse than the blue ninjas, the beavers. <laughs> That's another reason not to become a scout leader. This list is kind of blurred into one now. <laughs> I've got my points and they've all kind of blurred into, I don't know what number I'm up to. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, sometimes adults and leaders are worse than young people. Moaning and groaning and politics and why do I have to do this and why do I have to do that? And in the end, as a group scout leader, I think, you know what? What is the point in being a group scout leader? I'm not even getting paid for this. And this is more stressful than being at work. So sometimes I just think, you know what, if there were no leaders, scouting would be amazing. So my wife would uh, would totally agree with this. Another reason not to be a scout leader is you get addicted by badges. Everywhere you go, uh, even on holiday, I'm, I'm sourcing, I'm looking for a badge for my camp blanket or a pin badge for my hat. When I was in Cornwall the other week, uh, I found a load of badges. I found lifeboat badges and... and a, Cornish pasty badge because I was in Cornwall uh, we went to a castle and I was looking for a castle badge every camp you go to you want a camp blanket badge you meet another scouter you exchange badges you see some nice badges online that says smile be happy you buy that and in the end you you realize you have hundreds of badges and you still have not sewn them onto your camp blanket and they're just dotted around your house and in boxes and all sorts of places and it can be expensive badges you can buy for a quid you can buy three four five pound so yeah buying badges is addictive so the last reason why you shouldn't become a scout leader it's really hard to convince people to trust you and to listen to you in scouting there's a lot of vintage leaders who've been around since Baden Powell and they've always done it this way and they hate change and as a young person you come along and say actually why don't we do this and why don't we try that and they look at you and think that's nothing about scouting no and then you become a leader and the scout leader doesn't want to hand the keys to you they don't want to pass the baton on to you because 
not sure how you're going to do it. And you as a scout leader have got to convince that other leader that you can run that badge. I know those leaders. There are lots out there and maybe you're watching this and you're one of those leaders. You should embrace it. Embrace new blood in scouting. We've got to move. As Baden Powell says, it's a scouting movement. So we move with the times. And if you're one of those vintage scout leaders, just hand the baton down. You're still there. We still need you. But trust in us younger leaders that we, we have the experience. We have the knowledge. And if things fail, <laughs> learn from those mistakes. But I think that's one of the big problems with scouting. Is that people in the district and in the county, they've been around for hundreds of years. And they don't want to pass it on. I don't know what they're scared of. But that is probably one of my biggest frustrations as a, as a new scout leader was back in then no one wanted to no one trusted you and when i came up with new ideas i got i got beaten down so i think you know what what's the point we just sit at home watching whatever playing on the playstation drinking tea flicking through tiktok it's easier than all this isn't it so there you go guys there's my 10 reasons why i don't think you should be a scout leader there's a many many reasons why but on the flip side, scouting is absolutely amazing. I have so many cool experiences and memories and I've done a vlog about reasons why you should be a scout leader. So watch that one, it's just here. And don't forget guys, if you wanna become a scout leader, 154,000 adult volunteers are in the UK and you could be one of us. Don't forget, subscribe to Big Man The Woods, click that notification bell and YouTube will tell you every time I new upload a new video. Until next time guys, take care and happy camping.